Hi all, in this video, let's learn about the differences between callback, promises, async and await. So this is a common JavaScript interview question. So before understanding what is callback, promises, async and await, we need to understand few points. So let's discuss that first. So firstly, JavaScript is a single threaded programming. What does it exactly means? It means JavaScript can run and process only one statement at a time. Fine. So now JavaScript is a single threaded programming. But for some actions, like if you're trying to request some data from the client to the server. So what happens? You need to wait some amount of time. So in this time, what happens? The browser would not allow you to handle other events like button click or scrolling or giving some inputs. Browser will not allow these things. So what happens here is it is like a blocking. So if you do any of the API request from the client to the server, what usually browser do, it will block the other inputs, other events. Okay, this is like a blocking. So in order to prevent this type of blocking, what we need to do is we need to implement this type of actions in an asynchronous way. So for that, we need this callbacks, promises, and async and await. So now let's start with the callback. Right. So usually I will explain you the purpose of why this callback is necessary. First thing is like, Let's understand the, here we have three functions. If you call three functions like this, one after the other, first, second, third, what happens? You'll be getting one. So the order also the same one and the order would be like two, the order would be like three. So it is a normal thing. So you have three functions, you're calling them like this. So the order would be the same order. How you call the functions would be executed in the same order. Fine. Now let's understand about this callback functions. Fine. So this is a function. Okay, and this is a second function. This is a third function. Now you have three things like this, right? Now, if you execute these three functions like this, one after the other, first, second, third, like this, how you will be getting the output? First, this would be executed, and next, this one function would be called. But this function would not be executed immediately because this set timeout is an asynchronous action. So, asynchronous means usually in any of the tutorials, anywhere, you, Everyone used to show the asynchronous code like this with the set timeout. Usually not only with the set timeout, if you do any of the API call also, that becomes an asynchronous code. But for our simplicity, we are doing that this set timeout as an asynchronous code. Here, what we are doing, we are we have three methods and we are calling these methods one after the other. When you call the first method, yes, it would be locked. Nothing stopping this first. And when you call the second method, what happens is there is a asynchronous code. It means it would not execute immediately. Even if you give here zero, or even if you give here 1000, 2000, any of the number, if you give here, it will not be executed immediately. Okay. It would be going as a micro task. Okay. It means it has the least priority for the event loop. So thereafter, you are calling the third function. This third function would be executed as it is. After the first is executed, third would be executed, and this one would not be executed. Okay, once these two are done and there is no queue in the event loop, then this asynchronous code would be picked and it would be executed. So this is order. Now in this case, what happens? One, three, two is the order of this consoles. Clear? So now what happened? If you use any of the asynchronous code, the order would be this way. Okay, fine. Now you understood what is an asynchronous code. And when you call any of the asynchronous code, it executes at last. Okay, even if you give the zero as a milliseconds as well. Now, let's understand. So if you have a requirement where you should call this third function only after the second function is completed. So once this function is completed, then only you need to call the third function. It's not like directly calling this. Once this is success or once it is you are in this function, then only you need to call the third function. If that is our requirement, how we are going to solve this thing. So here comes the callbacks into picture. Callback do not have a special syntax. Okay, it, it don't have any special syntax. And moreover, callbacks are not asynchronous by nature. By default, callback is not asynchronous by nature. We are using callbacks as for the asynchronous purpose. It's it, it doesn't have any special syntax for callbacks. Now, what is our purpose? First, we need to call function one and we need to call function two. Only after function two is done, then only function three should be executed. If that is our use case, then the callbacks come into the picture. So how we can do that? So 
in this example we can see so this is first okay and this is a second function and this is a third function if you observe in the second function this function is taking one parameter okay and this is same as set timeout this is like an asynchronous code and in this asynchronous code inside you are calling this callback function fine okay so what is this callback let's see so here how we are calling we are calling first as the first and first would be logged and when while you are calling the second method you are passing the third parameter reference here okay now this second parameter you are passing as an you are calling second function and you are passing the third parameter as an argument so in this callback so this is a variable name callback for our simplicity we wrote it as a callback you can write any of the method name here and that method you are calling here so it means you are calling the third method here okay now the order would be first first one would be called so one would be locked second you are not calling you are calling this function now this function would be executed after some time and then the two would be locked and thereafter it is calling other callback function that is this method now in this case what happens the log is like one two and three so now what we have achieved with the help of this callback function with the help of this callback functions we could able to call the methods as per our need okay when this third method should be executed only once second method is completed then this third method should be executed so in this cases we have used this callback functions like this okay once this is done we are calling this method so this is what the use case for the callbacks fine so now let's discuss some of the issues with this callback methods so now in this callbacks what happens is are you really having anything to handle the error handling no we can't handle error handlings here and also if you want to pass one input one response input to another api call request so that is also a problem so in short if you nest the callbacks like this so here if you take this is one callback method okay and this is one callback method and this is one callback method like this if you have nested callback methods what happens is error handling becomes tough and passing passing one request one response request as another request becomes problem so here comes some main problem when you nest the nested nature of this callbacks becomes a mess immediately so it becomes uh, very un unreadable and unpredictable as well so this nested nature becomes unpredictable and that is the callback hell we call usually so now what we can do so if it is a single function like this we can proceed like this and if it is multiple nested callbacks don't do like this at one point it is like a mess you can't unpredict the nature of this okay so in these situations try to go with the promises now the promises comes into the picture fine what is a promise so in any of the promise what happens is a promise consists of two states so whether the promise should be successful or it should be failed fine so in our case it should be resolved it means success reject means it is failed now this is the way you you are going to declare or initialize a promise constant any of the variable name new and promise and you need to give two parameters resolve and reject the names can be anything but the order is important first parameter is for the resolve and second parameter is for the reject so this is how you are going to create a promise promise has some syntax like this fine okay and now how to resolve this promise so for example in this promise if you say in if an api call is success you'll be getting a resolve would be called if api call is failed you'll be getting a reject state but here we are directly resolving the promise once you resolve a promise like this what happens is this promise to can consume this promise response okay so how it can consume so this is how you are going to consume the promise so now what we are understanding is we are understanding about the promises in in depth a bit and we are, so this is how you are going to consume so once you resolve the promise it means you are giving some response how to consume that promise to dot then so with then what you are doing is you can consume this response here like this okay now this is how you can uh, consume the response you understood this now if you write one more asynchronous code something like this so now what happens is you are writing one asynchronous code and you wrote promise dot then you are trying to consume this promise like this what happens here is until and unless so once this promise is success or rejected then only this promise dot then would be triggered okay once this is success or failed then only it would be called and now these promises can be changed it means for example this promise is success 
then it this then would be executed and here you can add some formatting things or interrupt interrupts interceptor things anything you can add at this first response and dot then again you can pass this response to this so this is how this is the easiest part we have here so while we are understanding about the callbacks we understood one thing so one response see first this response it can give one response and you can use this response and you can pass some other request also here okay but the same thing we you can't do in the callback functions okay and this is how you can do here you can chain these promises so that you can use this first response as a request in this as well by the help of this chaining so this is dot then so how to handle the errors so in the same way dot then is there right in the same way we'll be having also dot catch as well fine so in these ways you can handle the errors you can nest the pro nest the asynchronous code api calls fine so now with the help of this what promises makes us more readable code maintainable and verified it easily and when you declare any of the promise you should not handle just dot then cases okay it means you are handling only the resolve case you also need to consider the rejected case as well okay for example let's take this example so this is a function get users so if someone calls this get users if it is success and this function is returning a promise okay if it is success it re it returns this array of objects if it is failed it returns this one. so this is what this get users is going to do fine so we should not whenever you are declaring a promise you should handle both the cases the resolve case and the reject case as well for example go down here now i am calling this get user function and i am passing a method here and now see i am using dot then and dot catch as well dot then is is called when it is response so for example when this is came okay when on success is true then you will be coming this and this dot then would be executed if this is rejected okay then this catch would be executed this catch error would be executed so whenever you are writing any of the promise remember one thing you need to handle both the cases the success case and the fail case like this in this way you can easily handle the errors and with the help of the promise chaining concept you can use the older first response as a request to the second response as well so this is what you need to understand and now in general what we in general what we do is we consume the promises for example fetch is the best example in consuming the promises as a response fetch is a web api with the help of this fetch what we are going to do is we are going to call this fetch this method and you can consume its response like this most of the cases this would be happening this is how a promise can be consumed right so now let's come back to the async and await what is this async and await we understood what is a promise and the promise can handle the errors what all the issues we have with the callbacks promises can solve that fine then what is the need of this async and await so async and await is not a new topic so under the hood of async and await promises will be there so async and await is nothing but the promises internally async and await would be using the promises but by using this async and await it's an easiest way to write the promises okay it would be like it seems to be like you are writing a synchronous code that is what the help of this async does async and await so if you say this is a normal function if you write till this point this is a normal function if you say something as async in front of this function now this function becomes an asynchronous function and so so far you are not uh, using or consuming this so it doesn't give you any new things but just i think is a keyword you need to use in front of a function now you have a function here i'm using async so now this function becomes an asynchronous function now inside this function i'm using await okay now await means what does this await do okay it will wait until this promise we understood that fetch is an promise okay until this fetch is fetch promise is settled it would be wait here itself the, the execution would be wait here itself that is what you are saying await wait until this promise is settled it means you are saying that this promise should be settled settled in case it should be success or it should be resolved it, till that time you 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 are saying that you want to wait here okay that is what you are saying okay once this is success or fail that response would be cached here and thereafter you are converting that response dot json and again you are using await 
what that this await ensures is that data is locked data is not locked before the response is populated so once the response is available then only that data would be populated here okay this await what does it usually do is it will wait until this is completed then only it will be assigning the value here so in this case like this you can handle the asynchronous code okay this is like async await don't use await directly you should use async if that function is async then only you can use await keyword so under the hood now you can see it is working as a promises under the hood it would be working as a promises but it seems to be like a synchronous code you are writing the code one after the other so there is no issues here so how to handle so like this you if you see here like this you are chaining the promises you are chaining the asynchronous code you can you are using this response okay and you are, you can do one more api call as well here it means you can chain the asynchronous code as well then how to handle the errors in the async and await in the async and await you can handle the errors with the help of the try catch like this okay this is how you are going to access the errors in the async and await and you need to remember one thing in the modern asynchronous world the javascript more often async and await would be used okay no one will go with the promises most of the cases more everyone will be using async and await but one thing you need to remember if there is a condition like this so for example you have three promises like this and if you want to execute the three promises at a time or if you want to execute any of the promise if it is executed if you are okay then you need to do something like promise dot all promise dot raise there would be additional functionalities so that is the reason try to learn promises in depth okay you need to understand more additional features and benefits of this promises okay if you want to just use uh, the main purpose of the promise you can go with async and await but if you want some additional capabilities and features of this promises then learn more like promise dot raise promise dot all there would be a number of things like this so it's better to understand in depth knowledge of this promises so this is what the differences between callback async and await so we have discussed what is its basic functionality and also how to handle the errors and about the chaining and all the majority of the portions we have tried tried to complete so i hope you understand the video thanks for watching Please subscribe for more videos.